Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I am your host, Chris Torrance. If you've had an Apple computer long enough, then you've probably experienced the problem of a blown capacitor and the releasing of the magic smoke from the power supply. So today we're going to take a look at a new solution for that from Ultimate Micro. And this is the Universal Power Supply Kit. And this is a kit that's designed to fit inside the existing power supply case for your Apple II and your Apple III. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what comes in the kit, how to install it, and see how it works. So let's get started. So opening up the Universal Power Supply Kit from Ultimate Micro, you can see that we've got several components. So we've got the power supply unit itself. This is made by Sinpro in Taiwan. And according to Henry Corbis, this is actually used for some medical devices. So it's highly reliable and it's currently being manufactured and should be manufactured for several years to come. So there should be no problems about availability. And then we've got the actual kit itself. And so the kit consists of a adapter board. And as you can see, this adapter board has holes for mounting it both in the power supply case as well as standoffs for mounting the power supply. So what you have to do then basically is depending upon your power supply and the type of Apple you have, you choose different standoffs so that it'll fit inside your case and then so you can fit the power supply on top of it. Then we've also got the connector. So this is the connector that goes from the power supply unit itself to your logic board on your Apple II. We've got just a little plastic adapter that goes on the end of the power supply case. We've got some standoffs and these are used when you're actually mounting the power supply board to the inside of your power supply. And then finally we have a whole bunch of scotch lock connectors and this is what you need to hook up the AC power to your power supply. So because this is a beta unit, we didn't actually get any instructions with this, but the production units will come with a full color installation guide. So I've also pulled out my own power supply from my Apple IIe. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to open this up and then see about installing the universal power supply unit into that. So as you can see from the mounting board, there are various places where you might need to actually break off the board. So for example, if you have a shorter enclosure for say an Apple II, 2 Plus 2E, and for the Aztec steel enclosures, then you actually need to snap off this part of the board so it'll fit. And if you have a Vulcan, or an inner drive, then you actually need to snap off this part. So you would only use this part then to actually mount it inside the power supply case and you would mount the power supply on top of that. So there's a lot of holes here and so you can really just kind of mix and match depending on the brand of your power supply case or what type of apple you're putting it in. There's enough mounting holes that it should fit no matter what type of case you have. All right, so now I've got the lid off of my old power supply and you can compare the two circuit boards. And you can see what a big difference there is between the old one, which is copyright 1980 from Aztec, and a much newer, more modern board. So if we look at the rated outputs, the old Aztec on plus five volts, it's rated for 2.5 amps on the new Sinpro, it's rated at six amps for five volts. For the plus 12 volts, it's rated at 1.5 amps for the Aztec, and the new one is rated at three amps. And then for the minus 12 volts and minus five volts, those are both rated for 0.25 amps for the old one and 0.8 amps for the new one. So the new one is a lot smaller, it has far fewer components and the output is much higher. So we'll go ahead and we'll disconnect these wires from the AC input and from the switch and then we'll 
break the sealed screws here and void our warranty and go ahead and see about mounting this. Another point when you're removing the screws that hold down the power supply, just be careful because each of the screws also has a washer on it and you don't want to leave any of those washers behind in the case where they could actually end up touching any of the components on the new power supply. Alright, so I've almost got the old power supply out and there's only two actual wires that are connected to the power supply. You can just pull those right off the posts. So here's the first one and then we'll just pull off the second one. All right, and then once we've got that out, so there's our bare case. Here's the old power supply. Uh, just be careful if you've actually had it turned on recently, like I did, that you don't touch any of the capacitors because they might still be carrying a charge. And so it's actually a really nice looking board there. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and put in the new power supply. And to do that, we need to figure out, first of all, how big the actual bottom needs to be. So here's the board itself. You can see that it says break for short 2, 2 plus 2E and for Aztec steel enclosures. So sure enough, looks like we're going to have to break this off. We're going to go ahead and install the PCB board and then the power supply. So my power supply actually had pin style connectors here. So when we attach that to the new power supply, we're actually gonna use these male connectors and there's a black one and a red one. So make sure when you're putting it together that you get the correct end. So this says AC input this end, DC output this end. So we're just gonna slide this in here and just use the original mounting screws with their washers and just make sure to not lose any washers when you're either assembling or disassembling. Now that we have the PCB board mounted, we can go ahead and put in the new power supply. And just make sure again to put the AC end, which is the one with the five pins, down at the AC uh, end of the enclosure. So the final release of the kit, I'm assuming from the pictures, will come with a brown and a blue wire, but my kit came with a red and a black. So just to be somewhat consistent, I'm going to go ahead and attach the brown to the black. So black is going to be hot. And then I'll attach the red to the blue. So that will be neutral. This seems a little loose, so I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this a little bit just to hopefully give it a little bit more bite. Then I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the 5 pin connector so the black or hot wire goes closest to the capacitor and we'll use a small slotted screwdriver to just shove that down in. The red wire goes into the exact center so this is the neutral and then we'll go ahead and we'll put the strain relief cap on top. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the DC connector cable. Alright, so now that we've got this hooked up, I think what I'm going to do is actually just plug it in, turn it on, and then try and measure the voltages to make sure everything looks good before I actually plug it into the Apple II. So one important thing to keep in mind is that the ground on the case is not actually connected to the ground on the DC output. The way this works is you need to actually mount the case into the Apple II and then that will actually complete the connection between the ground on the DC and the ground from the AC. You don't really want to wire this up to the Apple II without actually mounting it inside the case. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch on. You can see that the light comes on, which is a good sign. And we'll go ahead and measure the voltages. So I'm just going to put this into the black or ground for the DC. And then I'll measure, first of all, the white, which should be the plus 12 volts. Actually, first let me turn this to DC. And so we'll put that into the white. We get about 11.85 volts there. The red should be the plus 5, maybe about 5.2. The green should be the minus 12, and there we go. 
and then the blue should be the minus five. One other safety feature of this new power supply is when you turn the switch off, it actually automatically discharges all of the capacitors. So you don't have to worry about having any residual charge on the capacitors, unlike the old power supply where you might need to be concerned about that. All right, we now have the power supply installed in the Apple IIe. And just as a final sanity check, I'm gonna check the continuity between the ground on the motherboard and the enclosure. And so you can see that we've actually closed the loop there, so they're the same ground. So that's good. So that should mean that the DC ground is the same as the AC ground. So now we'll go ahead and we'll fire it up. All right, so we got a beep and it appears to be booting. So it looks like it has enough power to supply to the peripheral cards and to the disk drive. So everything appears to be working great. What we'd want to do next is probably put a load on it by putting in some additional peripheral cards and make sure that it can handle that. Another thing we could do is just run it for a long time. It should have significantly less heat output than the old power supply just because of the simplified design. But overall it appears to be working great and powering the Apple IIe. And hopefully this power supply will last for many more years to come. So final thoughts on the Ultimate Micro Apple II and Apple III Universal Power Supply Kit. It appears to work great. It was a painless installation, easy to do. The board is really simple. It's easy to figure out. There's lots of markings on it so you can quickly figure out which holes you need to use to mount which power supply. And it's great to be able to replace your old power supply with something that's a lot more modern and that'll presumably last a lot longer without a lot of maintenance. So final recommendation is I would strongly recommend that you go out and get one of these for your Apple II and Apple III. I've showed the installation for an Apple IIe. If you head over to Joe's Computer Museum, you can actually see him install it into some other apples. And just to give an idea of different flavors of installation, and his take on the kit. So the Ultimate Micro Universal Power Supply Kit is a fantastic add-on for your Apple II or Apple III, and hopefully it'll breathe many more years of life into your retro computer. So thanks for watching.